Where were we? Bloop. What's going on everybody? My name is Chris and welcome back to Puck Hunt Gaming. We are just gonna jump right in with another console deep dive. A couple of videos back, we did a deep dive on the Super Nintendo where I took a look at all the different hockey offerings available on that console. And we're gonna keep that sweet, sweet Nintendo retro loving alive here today. And we are gonna have a look at the Nintendo GameCube. The Nintendo GameCube was first released in November of 2001 and lasted all the way up until the summer of 2007. In those six short years, we got eight different hockey games for the Nintendo GameCube and we've already got five of them here today, including two I already showed you in a previous video. So what we're gonna do here today, I'll show you the two I already got, I'll show you the brand new Nintendo GameCube pickups and then we'll let you know about the different games we we still have left to collect and some really interesting history baked into those so let's jump right into it it looks like 2003 was a banner year for hockey on the nintendo gamecube as three of the console's eight hockey titles were released in 2003 including two of the ones i've already added to the collection you've seen them we won't spend a whole lot of time on them but that is nhl 2003 with jerome aginla on the cover is he the best player to have never won a Stanley Cup, do you think? Let me know in the comments below. This one has turned into an immediate favorite of mine, and this is NHL Hits 2003 with Chris Pronger on the cover. This game really mastered the arcade style above and beyond what the NHL 3D hockey series did on the Nintendo 64. It's a real shame I hadn't discovered this game until just now. Folks, definitely pick yourself up this game it might be among the best I've played so far, just saying. And let's jump right into the new pickups here for the collection on the Nintendo GameCube. And another one from 2003, this one is NHL 2K3 with Jeremy Roenick of the Philadelphia Flyers on the cover. This one's still a little bit pricey to this day. On price charting, they have it listed complete in box at $33. This one, I managed to track it down at a local game store and really lucky I was able to do that because this one, for whatever reason, just seems to be growing in price on eBay. So super lucky and thankful I was able to get a copy here in town. Moving right along, the EA franchise maybe even peaked on the Nintendo GameCube and I've got a couple of their entries here. Almost got them backwards there. We'll start with 2005 with Marcus Nasland of the Vancouver Canucks on the cover. And the last hockey game we've got here for the Nintendo GameCube is NHL 06 with Vincent Le Cavalier and the Tampa Bay Lightning on the cover. So what do we have left to pick up on the Nintendo GameCube? There are three titles left to pick up, maybe four games. You'll see what I mean here in a minute, starting with NHL Hits 2002. This is the predecessor to the one I just showed you, NHL Hits 2003. And this one isn't quite as valuable. I just haven't gotten around to picking it up just yet. Price charting, I believe, has it around between $15 and $20 Canadian. That seems to be about right. I've seen them listed closer to maybe $25. I'm holding out to try and get a cheaper version, but super excited to see if that one is anywhere near as good as 2003. The next one we've got to pick up is NHL Hits Pro. Technically the sequel to NHL Hits 2003. This one features Nick Lidstrom of the Detroit Red Wings on the cover and also trends a little bit pricey. This one in the $32, $33, $35 range Canadian on price charting and that seems to be about right out in the wild too. So I've got to save some pennies if I want to complete this GameCube hockey collection. And the last hockey game we have to pick up for the Nintendo GameCube is perhaps both the most boring and the most interesting and it is NHL 2004. Why is this one so polarizing? As I may have mentioned in a previous video, there are several hockey video games that have variations on their cover art and different cover athletes depending on which version you get. NHL 2004 features two cover variations, one with Atlanta Thrashers forward Danny Heatley on the cover and old Burnaby Joe, Joe Sackick of the Colorado Avalanche on the other. But why the variation? This is where this gets really interesting. When this game first hit shelves on September 22nd, 2003, it was released with one cover, the one with Danny Heatley on it. But tragically, just one week later on the 29th, 
Heatley was involved in a serious motor vehicle accident that saw his teammate Dan Snyder pass away from his injuries. Understandably so, Heatley got himself into a little bit of legal trouble amidst this accident. So what did EA do? They decided to pull the plug having Heatley on the cover. They began to phase out new versions with Joe Sackick on the cover with subsequent printings. Now for collectors, what does that look like? That means there are some consoles that have easy to find cover variations while others are extremely challenging. On the PS2, for example, I have both copies in the collection behind me. No problem, neither one really seems to command more value than the other. As far as Xbox goes, I don't think I've ever seen a Sackic variation. Dig through your games, guys, and see if you have one, because through all of my searching, maybe Xbox had already printed enough games on their initial print run to satisfy the demand, and they didn't have to reprint with a new cover. I'm not sure. If you have any information or a second cover, please let me know in the comments below. But on the GameCube, there were a very limited amount of Sackic covers printed, some that are commanding giant premiums to this day. Just take a look here on eBay. This is the asking price, and while there's not too, too many people that are gonna pay that premium, I'm probably gonna end up being one of them. So maybe this is another one where you can look through your old GameCube games and see if you have a Sackic variation. Please don't make me spend the two or three hundred dollars that some people are asking. The Heatley version, however, remains pretty inexpensive to this day, five, 10, $15 Canadian, and you can pretty easily secure yourself a copy. But I will be looking to add both copies to this collection eventually, so I have three slash maybe four games left to pick up on the Nintendo GameCube, and I'm probably gonna be picking up even more here in the near future. Folks, that's all I got for you here today. Thank you so much again for liking and commenting and subscribing. Make sure you stay tuned for the next one and we will see you next time.